At American Bottle Auctions, we get a lot of calls um, and emails every day. We ask people to send in photographs, and they do. Um, and they also call us and describe bottles. And we thought we'd do a short video here and just show you what we are not looking for. Now, these are bottles that they are, a lot of them are old, a lot of them are still made today, but they're just simply not valuable. And we don't like to uh, exclude unvaluable uh, or uh, bottles not worth a whole lot, but uh, we certainly um, try to stay with the better bottles. And we'll also have a video showing that. We'll start um, with some of the bottles that are still being made today. And these are, um, this is a, a typical bottle right here. This is the Lee & Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. This uh, product has been made for uh, about 150 years. It's extremely uh, popular and you can still buy it today to flavor your steaks. Back then you have to remember that people, um, their meat was usually uh, half rancid and they needed something to uh, spice it up, make it taste better, and this was uh, certainly one of the most, if not the most popular. This may be the most uh, popular bottle ever made and it comes in two sizes. You rarely, rarely see the larger size but almost every household in America had this on their table. Um, here's another one that's still made today. This is Listerine. Listerine, um, this has a screw top um, but they made it for just a ton of years and they made millions and millions of bottles. They come, uh, they all look very very similar uh, some are bigger, some are smaller. Uh, this one, like I say, has a screw top. And that's another uh, thing we want to point out. A bottle that has a screw top and is clear generally is not going to have much value. There are exceptions to that, but generally it's very rare. So Listerine, out. We don't want Listerines. Hires root beer. Here's another bottle that uh, people would... Uh, make their own root beer. They would pour this into five gallons of water and they uh, would have Hires root beer. So it would, it would come in a, a syrup and um, they'd mix it all up. This bottle is old. It's about 1890 just like the Lyrian Perrins um, but it's not a bottle that uh, has value per se. It's a neat bottle. Every bottle has something going for it. It's just not valuable. The three-in-one oil, um, they still make this product today, and generally it's available in a can, but um, it was once available in a bottle. This bottle is about turn of the century, 1900, and it is not worth really anything. Um, this is another one, Pizzo's Cure for Consumption. Um, consumption was a... a form of TB, um, it was bad. And um, generally, uh, the piezo cures were almost pure heroin. So people would buy this, and uh, it would certainly um, ease their pain. And one of the, the things about these is when you find them in a hole, they're usually more than one. So you would have um, a half a dozen or so because they usually would take it until they died. Um, here's uh, a Bromo Seltzer. Now these are another bottle that um, they're pretty, they're blue. Who doesn't like blue? But they are everywhere. When you dig a, an outhouse or a dump you're going to find Bromo Seltzers along with the Lee and Perrins, the 3-in-1 oil. So Bromo Seltzers are another bottle that they're pretty, they come in different sizes. And they're fun to set up and put a different um, grouping in, but uh, they just aren't worth a dime. Here's another one, the Ruby Foam for the teeth. Um, kind of a neat bottle, uh, maybe 1890, 1900. Uh, another one that is very, very common. This was, uh, I believe it's a powder, and they uh, make a foam out of it and, and use it to uh, clean their teeth. Um, Here's a melons food. This is another very common bottle. It's uh, baby food and this has the screw top so you know right away it's um, going to be newer, probably machine made. 
Um, these are aqua is another color that is not the greatest. Um, it's if you take the standard um, ingredients for uh, glass, you end up with aqua, and that's what this color is. They started uh, coming up with some greater colors, and uh, we can talk about that later. This is a hood sarsaparilla, another extremely common bottle. It is old. Look at that top. It looks fairly old. This is probably 80s, maybe um, even earlier. But um, Hood Sarsaparilla, a very popular beverage then, not so popular now. And the bottle itself, um, just about no value. Uh, I'll briefly, um, also on the Coca-Colas, there's really no Coke in this shape that um, has a lot of value. Um, this says Sacramento on it. Um, they have them from almost every major city in the United States. They made them by the millions. They just aren't worth much. Some Coke bottles are, but not those. Um, these, uh, you're going to find a lot of jars. Jars were put up by people all over the country, uh, especially in the Midwest, which is uh, often where they were made. But they uh, had to sustain themselves during the winter months and during the summer and spring and other seasons they could pick all the fruit they wanted or vegetables and um, pack them and put them in their cellar and they'd have food for the winter. They literally made millions and millions of jars very similar to this. You'll see the name Atlas, you'll see the name Ball, and then you'll also see the name Mason, and that's why they often call them Mason jars. Um, last I'm going to show you is a reproduction. This is a reproduction of the EG booth. So all, most of these bottles are old. Uh, aside from that, maybe this is maybe 1950 or something. But they're semi-old, some of them older than the others, but they all have one thing in common. They're not valuable, and they're something we are not looking for. Uh, the EG booze. Now, I want to just bring this up because we get probably at least one or two a week um, uh, calls to see, uh, hey, I got an EG booze. It's original. I know it. My grandfather brought it over on the Mayflower. And it's just simply not true. Uh, most of these um, are reproduced. They're the most reproduced bottle that I'm aware of. Um, this uh, not, is not even a good reproduction. It has what is called a fake ponnel. And you can see that Pondel was in, to, in, in the mold. So um, this was made by New Line. Uh, Clevenger Brothers made the first and best ones. They're also made in Japan. They're made just about everywhere. Um, this has a cork, and it has a fake um, applied top. Uh, the top is really, um, this is all machine made. It was made in one piece. And it is, although um, a kind of a neat looking bottle, um, certainly not even close to the original. And we will show you an original um, down the road. But for now, uh, reproduction. A lot of reproductions out there. And if they look really clean and just too neat and tidy like they were made yesterday, they probably were. So that's our little demonstration on bottles that we are not looking for. So if you watch this and you decide that, wow, I've got this, and you can, if you just look at these bottles, they all have something in common. They're kind of blah. Um, you know, no writing, uh, aqua, clear, screw caps, just bottles that um, generally don't appeal to your eye, your senses, and therefore not a lot of value. Hey, thank you for listening.